you know what? Uh, Dr. Catherine Albrecht is right here uh, in studio with us. And uh, spyships.com, Catherine uh, Albrecht.com, A L B R E C H T.com. We had Kevin Sorbo on earlier talking about a libertarian film that he stars in. There's a lot of great people out there promoting freedom. That's how we're taking the world back. Sorbo's new film has already made in just a few months $69 million. And he's got another one coming out now. I have no financial connection to it. I'm just promoting it because this is how we bring them down. Our films, our culture, it's superior. And we set it up against them. People support it. People support Infowars.com. You promote the show. You buy our products. You give them to other people. That will build a culture of freedom. Voting with your dollars. That's why they want to end the free market. Uh, Catherine uh, is the host of Syndicated Program. She'll be hosting it today out of my studios. The Dr. Catherine Albright Show is, uh, and, and again, she's right here with us, uh, campaigning as usual to expose the whole technotronic NSA spy chips grid. Uh, and she's here with us in studio and traveling with her uh, lovely friend uh, who's uh, running for, I guess, state senate. So we'll we'll talk about that some with you as well. Okay, you can tell I'm wound up, so I'm going to have to sit back here and just uh, get your take on things and catch my breath. But thanks for coming to Texas. Tell us why you came to Texas and what's coming up. And then let's get into the big picture with you uh, of, um, wow, everything you talked about, everything I talked about from light bulbs that are spying on you that people didn't believe to uh, uh, smart meters outside your house with microphones listening to you. I mean, it's all just coming out. It's a, it's a coming out. They're like, of course we listen to everything you do. Like, let's play that Fox News clip of the Wall Street Journal editor saying, well, we record everything so we'll know who shot down the plane. This is wonderful. Uh, but, but except who runs the system? Uh, so we're going to talk about all that and more. Thanks for coming in. Hey, thanks, Alex. And, you know, one of the things you and I, of course, knew these things were coming years and years ago. And it's only been, I think, really in the last year or so that people, regular people, people who don't listen to the Alex Jones show, who don't listen to my show, have figured it out. I think a lot of it because of Ed Snowden revealing what's going on in a way that even people who want to deny it ha can't deny it. They have to say, wow, this really, this really is happening. Yeah, yeah. First, they weren't spying on anything. It was all conspiracies, even though we already had all the other whistleblowers of a decade ago. William Benny, super high level, uh, Wayne Madsen, but just no, it doesn't exist. Yeah, and I think what what we're undergoing now is sort of a psychological shift to get people into a mindset of accepting and even embracing the very change that they want to put into our lives. Uh, the, the best example I think right now people can understand is the use of cell phones, right? Everybody's carrying around a 24-7 tracking device that even 15 years calling ago... Calling it a phone is a calling misnomer. A phone, it's not That's a phone, one right? function yeah. of a globalist design, total takeover... I mean, Bill Gates admitted about four or five years ago, he goes, I want Connect to be like cell phones. I want to take your life over. Yeah, no, it's it's not a phone, and I think what we're going to start seeing more and more is these these things trying to tentacle into other parts of our lives. The one that has me probably the most concerned right now is our homes, because we've kind of gotten used to, I think we shouldn't have, but we've gotten used to being surveilled in the public sphere. You walk down the street, there's surveillance cameras, there's um, heat recognition tracking and, and thermal tracking, there's all sorts of things going on. We're tracked from the sky, they have photographs of the front of our homes, but they don't know what's going on inside of our homes, and I think that's a big part of what we need to stand up in resistance against. Well, well, they don't admit they do, but Google's on record. The cameras, the microphones, it's all in lifetime. Too. Well, I mean, they're but but the, but they're trying to sell it to us as something that that we will pay for. And you I opt think into this is really the difference between twenty. 20th century tyranny and 21st century tyranny is in the 20th century, you use guns and tanks to get your way. They're still doing a bit of that, but I think they figured out through all of the psychology that the 20th century contributed and understanding of how people think. They and that's what your out. doctorate in, so you can speak to that. It is, yes. I actually have a doctorate in human development and psychology from Harvard University. So and and, and I mean, Harvard, Harvard's where they actually teach a lot of the technocrats how to do this. Uh, it's probably true. Oh, oh, well, <laughs> at their higher actually. level PhDs, I just had... Uh, uh, one of those PhDs on Francis Boyle, and he's breaking down. And I've also had other uh, political scientists on who also went there. And at the higher level, they don't even mince words about this. Well, it's it's really about understanding what makes people tick. And I guess like anything else, you can use it for good, you can use it for bad, but it seems like it's being used for bad. And you look at the recent Facebook scandal where university professors, people doing psychological research, were able to figure out 
um, that if they fed people that negative news, that they would become negative, that these emotions were contagious. Figuring out how to manipulate people. And then, of course, what emerges is yeah, that... Yeah, Facebook's a lifetime study, just like Disney World admits, on how to control you. That's right. So the, the very professor who was involved in that study, of course, as you know, was also involved with the Defense Department doing research on how to quell dissent, how to make sure that when governments do certain things that people don't rise up or become ruffled or upset. So the very same professor who's doing that research with the Defense Department is doing this research with Facebook. And then, right on the heels of that, we find out from Ed Snowden that the intelligence agencies of the U.S. and Great Britain have been manipulating public opinion. And the, the key thing, I think, to understand is that as individuals, we look to other people to know what to do. And probably the best example, if, if you and I were sitting in a theater and we smelled smoke, we might look around and say, is, is there a fire? I don't know. And, and if everybody else just kind of went, eh, whatever, and kept eating their popcorn, we might do the same thing. But if we smelled smoke and looked around and everybody was running for the exits, we'd get up and run for the exits. And it's not because we're stupid. It's because we look to other people to figure out what to do. Now, your listeners, my listeners uh, are slightly different ilk. But They're programming herd mentality. They, well, it, they're taking advantage of something that's already in us, which is that we look to other people to see if something is dangerous or not. That's how they get us eating all of this horrible food because everybody else is eating it, so it can't be that bad. But that's also, I think, how they get us to embrace these things. The cell phone, well, everybody's got one. It can't be bad to be tracked 24-7. The GPS tracking, everybody's got it. The, 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 the things on the side of your home that are, that are um, you know, using RFID to, to track your electricity usage, everybody else is doing it. So I think that's really where this is going, is figuring out how to make the Internet look like nobody cares. Like... NSA revelations. You you do polls on this. We well, it came out this week. What well, we already knew because we're under attack by it. Exactly. They have all these fake bots to drive trends and make it look like freedom isn't popular. It, to make it look like it's not popular, and it's just like the smelling smoke. People think, are we becoming less free, or is there tyranny afoot? Well, let's look around. Let me look on the internet. Oh no, it looks like everything's fine. So I'll just go back to sleep. Well, that's like Weird Al Yankovic came out and attacked us this week. And it's got millions of views, and it, and just if he mixes in kooky stuff with real stuff that's going on. Yeah. That if you if you believe the government's done anything wrong, you're a nut with a tinfoil hat. I mean, literally, a guy I never even disliked, guaranteed, got recruited to promote that and put that out for social control, and and the documents keep coming out. But I can just look at it and tell the, how the script was written because it's a standard deal, and it's so painful to see how they get so many people to join the takedown of our civilization. Because if you look at what the globalists are planning, that's what's so scary. They're not bringing in this total social grid to bring peace and tranquility. It is consciously to bring in a hellish world government that's anti-human. Well, and I think the real goal is the, the, the people at the top, and I call them pawn scum. They've kind of like, they like to think they're the cream at the top of the milk, but they're really the, the scum that's risen to the top of the pond to choke out all the oxygen for the rest of us. And I live in New Hampshire where we have to scrape that stuff off periodically to get some life back into the pond. And those people at the top, you know, they, they, want, they want us around to clean the streets and take out the garbage, but they really don't want us making major change. Hi, I'm Dr. Edward Group. Today I'd like to talk about the war on women. You've experienced and heard about the benefits of super male vitality. Now, the new formula has arrived. Introducing the new super female vitality. I have specifically designed this formula to help the body naturally regulate itself without the use of artificial hormones. Key ingredients chosen from the highest quality sources. Each of these ingredients works synergistically with the female body in order to maximize overall vitality. You've heard the reviews and the feedback on how the original super male vitality has revitalized relationships. Now, both the man and the woman can have the revitalization in their own bodies with super male vitality and super female vitality. Secure your super female vitality today from our limited stock at InfoWarsLife.com. We have to decide that we can take control of our own destiny and promote individualism. People aren't going to want to join the New World Order, so they need to socially control us. But it's illegitimate for them to say that we basically have to do what they want. It's a fraud. It's called slavery. So how do we decide to build a future for humans that's better and more civilized and happier 
rather than a future that doesn't have humans. As Bill Joy wrote, why the future doesn't need us for Wired Magazine, now 15 years ago, and said the elite have pretty much decided to kill everybody. And that's what you're getting at is that the robots are here. It is the rise of the machines. Uh, Catherine, break that down. Well, so it's funny, even as I'm getting on the airplane to come here, I'm flying United, and instead of the gate agent taking my, my ticket and, and putting it on the scanner, there's now a machine. And I'm thinking, well, why pay a human if you can put in a machine? I mean, that's that's going to be the attitude on everything they can automate, they will. We, we would see the same thing in all the cash registers if we hadn't said, what, what's the self-checkout garbage? I don't want that. So they, they really are moving towards replacing humans with machines. And I had an interesting experience recently in Waltham, Massachusetts. I was actually uh, there for a big engineering conference and one thing led to another the guy who drove me to a television appearance I asked him who's the most famous person you've ever driven and he says well the, the CEO of Google Eric Schmidt <laughs> I said, he was sitting right here where I'm sitting he's like yeah and I said what, what in the world was Eric Schmidt doing in Massachusetts he said well he was going to see Boston Dynamics where they make the robots and I said, you're kidding me. He said, yeah, no, in fact, it's right next to your hotel, literally next door to my hotel. So I was sleeping in a hotel within a, a half a block of Big Dog and all of its companions. So I just cruised on over and introduced myself and walked in the door. And there, literally standing there was a whole array in their uh, reception area of, of the Big Dog robots. And what they envision, of course, this, this company has now been bought by Google. And you have to ask yourself, what in the world is Google buying military robots that were developed by the Defense Department? Why does this search engine need that kind of stuff you know these things can run through the woods they can hunt people down it's kind of crazy so I think it, it's it's sort of a one-two punch there's the, the military sort of robot control aspect on the one side where they rule you through technological power and surveillance but I think the other side people need to think a little bit more about is that they're getting us to voluntarily pay for the privilege of being tracked so 20th century tyranny it was Pol Pot killing a quarter of Cambodia in five years. It was um, Mao Zedong killing 200 million Chinese. It was Joseph Stalin killing 60 million of his own citizens and ruling by terror. So everybody in those countries was afraid. But there's a little bit of a problem. When you have people afraid, they want to take you down. They want to depose you. They want to get rid of you. And so they've figured out a new way in the 21st century, which is to make us look to them for protection, look to them to save us, and then get us to voluntarily, instead of at a point of a gun, say you have to carry a tracking device 24 seven, they say here, pay us six, seven, 800 bucks and we'll give you a tracking device that has music and games and all this addictive stuff on it. It's and total it's, and social have... programming, premeditated on record. And again, it's not that we're having automation because it's good, it's being done to replace us so that humans aren't making decisions at the micro level, it's all centralized. That's the problem. Right, and what's going to come next, see, because they're trying to figure out how do we get into people's homes? How do we get, see, the, the, the invisible thing that they can't track and surveil is what you say to your, your spouse over breakfast. Oh, that's what Gates said. It, it's right. connect that can look through your walls, how do you listens to you, knows your face scan. Right, so both Apple right now and Google are in an arms race to figure out which one is going to be the first to automate your home. And if you ever watch Star Trek, the original, you know, the computer's there, and they would say, hey, computer, plot a course for Orion 7. And the computer was always listening. And then the computer would say, you know, yes, Captain, blah, blah, blah. They want to do that in your home. And instead of making it seem that they're watching, tracking, surveilling, camera, monitoring you, they instead want to make it seem like you're going to have all this new control over your home. But the reality, if you put cameras into your home, then they're going to use that the same way they've used everything else they've used to track us. It's like your house being run off a smartphone. <laughs> it's literally like making your house glass. And they're advertising it everywhere even for poor people, put your house on this. And, and if you go look at new houses in Austin, they've all got smart systems. And it's like, it's a $20,000 system, part of the price. Don't you want it? Yeah, Austin is a test bed for this information. One of the reasons I came to Austin is, is, is because Austin is a test bed. Those remote controllable thermostats that were put in here, what, five, seven years ago? It's been a long time. Though That started right here in Austin. So th this is really an epicenter, uh, I think, of, of both sides. That's worrying. the smart meter going from, the, from the, the outside of your house into your house now. Well, they can even remotely turn off your, your air conditioning if you sign up for their system. And that's going to happen to everybody's home if we allow it to. And then back when we would tell them before this went in, six, seven years ago they were doing it, people would say, Austin's not putting in thermostats that they control. Yeah, well. And then it's here. Yeah. It, it's just this culture and of... they boast about it. They get you to pay for it. It's a cool thing. Sign up.
like our music. I like our culture. I like the good things we produce. I don't want to be overwritten by the technocrats that say I'm junk. But even if I was junk, do other humans have a right to just set up a total tyranny and take all my freedoms? I mean, if you try to stick a camera in a government building, they'll arrest you for espionage. But then they're putting in the local churches here in Austin, Texas, all the big mega churches, federal grants under faith-based initiatives to put connects in all the Sunday school classes and the kids play Microsoft video games. And if you go to the preacher and say this is a bad idea, they say, if you stir up trouble, the police officer will take you out for even talking to them. And that's at mega churches. I'm going to do an investigation on it soon. And that's because they're not preachers. They're actual technocrats of social control under clergy response teams. We're not just facing machines. We're facing human, human traders with the elite who have been told, prepare for stabilization during collapse. And they've recruited them under InfraGuard under clergy response and the rest of it, as actual spies. Almost every dentist and medical doctor my dad knows has been approached by Homeland Security to be secret agents. And they're doing it across the board, folks. They're fully converting us to an absolute tyranny to the point of opening the border to collapse the country. So that's how serious this is. I wanted to get Catherine Albert's uh, take on this. I wanted to play this clip from Fox News today with John Bussey, the Wall Street Journal uh, assistant managing editor, telling Fox, we need the NSA to spy on everything, and we're going to learn who did this missile because they are going to, quote, pull all this. Well, they already recorded it. So they've gone from, doesn't exist, no man behind the curtain, to, well, here's the problem. They can plant stuff in there as well. So let's go ahead and go to that clip. That's the, that's the latest uh, data points. At the end of the day, this is a time where the, where, where the, where the citizens around the world are going to be very happy for the NSA because oh. they're going to be scarfing up these telephone See, calls. It's global. They're going to be able to analyze this data. They'll be able, able to determine, Gosh. most likely, See, they need an uh, excuse. some of the communications that went on after the crash happened, which will probably clarify the picture in the days to come. See, because the truth is, they set it up decades ago. It goes back with Europe 50-something years, England back to World War II. Everything's being listened to. But the British papers would say we're listening to no phone calls, and it came out the Nazis believed that. And then the argument is, well, listening to all the phone calls in England, they, InfraGuard, got all the operators to do it, gave them a little extra money. Well, we beat the Nazis, so it must be okay. But see, then it's never went away. It was used by another political group to take control. Your take on that. Well, how do you get people to agree to allow you to take away their freedoms? You scare them. If people are afraid, and, and plus now after the NSA, after what Ed Snowden's told us, there's a big question of, well, why don't we shut these systems down? And of course, if they can show that the systems are protecting you and keeping terrorists from blowing you up and, and, and a terrorist under every rock from killing you and your kids, then yeah, you say, oh, thank you, instead of thank you for all the surveillance, instead of what the heck is up with all this unconstitutional surveillance? So it's really, it's, it's, it's a way of shifting public opinion. And I think it was very disturbing when we discovered that the intelligence agencies of the U.S. government in Britain were intentionally manipulating public opinion so that we're all saying, oh, how, how frightening, how frightening, we really need help. And then they say, well, that's why we're doing the surveillance that you say you don't like. Better start liking it because we're keeping you alive. And they're funding and creating Al-Qaeda and ISIS groups and giving them weapons to attack us. I mean, this is a really evil criminal group running things. Well, you need enemies. Every, every group that wants to take power needs an enemy because there's no, otherwise there's no justification. But think about that. Our government has opened the borders and is funding Al-Qaeda to kill every Christian they come across. Well, you even look at Saddam Hussein. Christians lived in Iraq peaceably under Saddam Hussein and even had guns. And now that Saddam Hussein is deposed, now we have a whole other government and nobody's armed. Women can't Christians go to college. They wear burqas and they get sexually mutilated and they don't, can't have guns. That's what our government wants to put in. Yeah, so you can say Saddam Hussein, maybe he was bad, maybe he was good, I don't know. But when you look at, well, he wasn't good. But well, he was from an older, <laughs> he, he was CIA. He was. He, was, he was trained in 1958. He was a CIA officer, not just an asset. He was Clearly. set up. Clearly. Clearly. But he was the old CIA when they actually had movie theaters and swimming pools and, 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 and wanted stability.
Yeah, no, I mean, the no old evidence. CIA was bad, but compared to these people? There's so much evidence. And uh, the, the, the real reason was we wanted to be in the Middle East. Uh, we wanted to have a justification to establish a base in the Middle East. And not only that, but it was Iraq. It was the Iraqi population that was used to test out all of the iris scanning technology, all of the portable fingerprinting, all of the checkpoints. And as I said way back then, 10 years ago, I said, Mark, my words, they're going to test this out over there, and then they're going to bring it home, and they're going to start deploying it in the U.S., and they are. But we better have checkpoints on the highway, Catherine, or Al-Qaeda. might ISIS might shoot down airplanes. Yeah, well, again, it's it's keep and who gave afraid, them who gave them afraid, the missiles? Keep you afraid, and then if you say I, I think all this surveillance is bad, then your mother-in-law, your brother, your your coworker says, "What are you talking about? There's enemies out there." It, the reality, if there were enemies out there, we would have every bridge, every subway, every power station in this country blown up. And thank God we haven't. Well, the government wouldn't be opening the border completely. Yeah, well, that's a whole other <laughs> that's a whole other topic. Yes, I want to go to some phone calls, but. Uh, tell us about Brave New Books. You've got an event uh, coming up there. Everybody should come out to it and support you and support them, the great work they do here in Austin, Texas. Tell us about that. Tell us about some of the other projects you're working on as you travel all over the country uh, fighting, you know, these face scanning in schools and thumbprinting and biometrics and everything else. Yeah, so I actually got my start on radio seven years ago on 90.1 FM right here in Austin, Texas. They've had some um, ex extensive legal expenses. And for those that don't know, let me just explain this. It's a yeah. micro that doesn't interfere. People would call it a pirate. And it's been on forever, and it's gone to the Supreme Court and stuff with the FCC, and they've been battling them, so you're here to help them. Yeah, so the thing about the FCC, they have the authority for anything that travels over state lines, but that radio station in no, in no stretch comes even near a state line. And so the real debate has been, does the federal government even have authority to look at, at broadcasting that doesn't go over state lines? So they have been uh, truly wonderful to me over the last seven years, so I've flown out to support them. They're doing a fundraiser at txlr.net where people can contribute to keep them on the air. And tomorrow night at Brave New Books, 7.30 p.m., I'm going to be giving a talk. We're going to be um, doing giving away door prizes, including start mail accounts, one-year start mail PGP encrypted accounts, uh, talking about start page and all the other things that I'm working on. So that'll be tomorrow night, 7.30. That is Saturday at uh, Brave New Books across the street from UT Austin, um, the campus there. Well, to be clear about this, Micro FM was always supposed, and AM was always supposed to be part of the FCC. They never allowed it, never did it. And now they've given away the whole digital spectrum to the big monster stations, not even the licensed mom and pops. And our country's collapsing. And if you've got people in their houses that have been putting this show out, your show out, others across the country battling, multiple fines, you name it, making no money just because they want to warn people there's fluoride in the water, the borders are down. They're, I mean, this is the resistance. Back before the CIA was totally New World Order at every level, they would pay in the 40s, 50s, 60s, 70s, and 80s in authoritarian communist regimes to get micro FM systems in. I happen to know for a fact some of the first micro FM systems that were run here in Austin, Texas, but I have no idea who, were actual leftover units from the 80s that had been sold as surplus because they were trying to keep them from being sold here in the U.S. and had actually been used in Eastern Europe to battle communism. So people I know took systems that battled communists and put them up against people trying to take farmers' land outside this town. Wow. So, so, I mean, th these people are patriots. And so I just salute what you're doing and I salute what they've done. Yeah, well, thank you. And I also wanted to mention I have a new column on tech, technology and privacy and the Internet at ehow.com, along with my Spy Chips co-author, Liz McIntyre. So after many years uh, of a hiatus, we're back together writing again on privacy topics. Our latest eHow uh, column is on encryption, ways you can get more encryption, uh, the fact that the basically the only way that you can defeat the NSA right now on the internet is through encryption. Ed Snowden verified that. He said encryption works. It's pretty much the only thing that does. So at ehow.com, we've got a new column up there. We have a new uh, column every week. We've got another one coming out on Monday, teaching people how to take the GPS coordinates out of their phones and uh, out of their photos. So people don't realize when you take a photograph, if someone were to take a photograph right here in your studio, Alex, and post it up on the internet, incorporated in there is EXIF, EXIF data, in the photo Photograph that anyone can see that would that would pinpoint the precise GPS coordinates that we are standing in right now. That is true if you take a photo in a home. That's true if you take a photo of your kids playing in the pool. That's true of, in fact, if and by the way, for those that don't know, it's a secret global project for at least 30, 40 years 
all the printer ink and all the big printer companies print secret codes do. in the ink. They do. Uh, the monies, they know when you're going through the airport what you got. I tell folks that 15 years ago, they laugh at me. If you take a blue light and you shine it on a printer out of your, um, a printout out of your printer, you can actually see tiny yellow dots and they actually form a specific pattern that identifies the printer and the, the serial number of the printer that printed them. So it's really about finding multiple ways to to, to track things back and doing it in a way that, that's secretive that people don't know is happening. And it's all because, quote, the Secret Service said, we don't want money counterfeiting. Meanwhile, they're the biggest counterfeiters out there at the Federal Reserve. It's not even a U.S. dollar. Everything's a fraud and a fraud as they devalue the money. And then, of course, it turns out that's not really what it's for. It's for total full-spectrum dominance. Yeah, and as far as the, the tracking of money, I've still yet to find evidence that they're able to do it, but there are anecdotal stories of people saying, I don't know, no, I was I, driving I, through whatever highway and I got pulled over and they seemed to know I had a lot of cash in my yeah, car. Yeah, yeah, Catherine, so, I, Catherine, know, I talked to deep. Let me just tell you, I'm from a whistleblower over 10 years ago that the filament line in them can be energized. And I was told by the same people that all the major computer chips that were standardized, even if you were unplugged from the Internet, uh, they can energize the chips and they're actually wireless. And then that is true. And then it's yes. sure. So no, we're on record breaking it absolutely. a decade before it was admitted this year. That's right. So so so, so the issue is they have an energized system that may, I don't know how to explain it. That, that picks it up and then it reflects it off. Yes. And just like RFID. But expanding on all of that is the fact, well, it's just this, this is here, it's happening now. So the Internet of Things, we talked about it, speaking of 10 years ago, when you and I were first talking about this, you had me on the show, I don't know, 10, 12 years ago, talking about RFID and this upcoming Internet of Things. And now, rather than, once again, rather than resisting it as we should, people are embracing it. Oh, the Internet of Things, every physical object on the planet, every cup of coffee, every refrigerator is going to broadcast its contents. We're going to know what's in people's medicine cabinets. It's going to be great. And there are actually um, huge conferences. I just got invited to speak at a big conference in Rome on the Internet of Things, and they want to fly me out and because I'm the only voice out of like 40 mm -hmm. people that are going to be there that says maybe it's not such a good idea. So this idea of embedding everything with trackability. Smart dust. And, and it's about making every physical object on the earth, everything we do surveillable. So you can't... Searchable like like the internet. Yes. Searchable like the internet. So you want to say um, what, what's in Alex's pocket right now? And, and you look at the most recent doorway you walked through where you look at and, and be able to know that. And then now they announce, oh, the police are giving the codes to kill switch all the cell phones in the city. Oh, we put microphones up to listen to you. And if you look at that, what they're doing with all of these different surveillance grids is they're using them to also now financially shut down their competition. That's true. All this massive data is only given to select groups to then be able to predict the future. Yeah, so, so when we're giving all this information about ourselves, the first thing I would say to people, and I'm sure you've said this over many years, turn off the mainstream media because it's feeding you misinformation. We now know that from Ed Snowden. We know that from multiple sources that the people who watch a lot of that kind of television have the wrong idea of what's going on because it's, it's manipulating people. And the next thing, don't post your every thought on Facebook, don't post all of your connections on Facebook. Don't write your personal emails when you're planning a get together to, to talk about these things. Don't do it through Gmail where they read every single email that you send and receive. People don't realize this, but if you if you have a Gmail account and you have an attachment on the account or a Yahoo account or a, a Hotmail account, if you have an attachment and it's let's say your resume or let's say it's something more important like uh, your your recent tax return, when when it goes into their system, they literally strip it off they open it up they make a copy of everything in there they know your social security number your accountant's name your deductions your income and all of this we are contributing to it see that's that's the reason why i have been working for the last three years to create start mail so that we've got an alternative so that there's a way that regular people can start using encryption and get off of these other systems so simple things people can do to start getting off not not just off the grid 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 the physical grid but getting off the information grid and that's why, you know, if you're going to go to a website, I had somebody ask me the other day, how, if I want to go to DARPA, should I just link directly? And I'm thinking, I wouldn't link directly to DARPA, but at StartPage, startpage.com, we've got a thing where if you look up DARPA, it says view by Xquick proxy. And what happens, we'll go to DARPA for you, make a copy of their website, put it on our servers, and then DARPA never connects with you. And you can see information on the internet privately. It's a proxy. So these are free tools that people sure. should be using. Well, I think that's a great idea. There are two different views of this, and I think both are applicable.
because they sell this idea in culture that's either one or the other, or there's mm -hmm. 10 different systems. You can only pick one or two. Generally, in all different forms of thought, you can find things that are usable. It's good to choose to keep your stuff private because you want to and because it's being stolen and because they're using it against humanity in general. It's not that you have something to hide. Exactly. But then it's important to operate in full view of the enemy yes. when you're engaged in political speech and to not be chilled. It's not like, oh, they're after me, they're right. listening, I better shut up. They win that way. Make your private stuff hard to get, but then be very vocal and public, wide open, sharing everything on Facebook or all the other myriad systems uh, so that we flood all their channels with Humat that shuts down uh, these controlled growth curves they have where they're gaming the system with trends. That's what we have to do. All of you are warriors, every race, color, creed, religion, to understand they don't want Infowars.com information out. They don't want us on Facebook and YouTube. People say, well, why are you on there? Because that's where the war is. That's why you've got to go to our Facebooks, you've got to go to our YouTube, you've got to go to our Twitters, you've got to go to all our systems, and you have to send it out to everyone. You have to send the memes out. We're the tip of the spear here, and we've already had a gigantic effect, thanks to all your prayers and work and drudge and so many AM and FM affiliates carrying the show. And but But we're all in this together. That's why I spend the whole show magnifying other talk show hosts who are doing a good job. And, and who aren't humet for the establishment with cognitive infiltration. You see a lot of infighting, stirring up. That's literally government agents, folks. When you see that, people that go around stirring stuff up all day, th that is humet, uh, bad humet engaged in that. <laughs> you've got to go out, reach people. You've got to speak out. You've got to be involved. You've got to understand the more visible you are, the more we'll show we're the majority, that this system's a fraud, and we'll defeat it. They're in trouble right now. And that's why they're accelerating their program. Catherine, I'm going to come back. We're going to take some phone calls. <coughs> but do you briefly agree that humanity's on the march and we're starting to see the worm turn? So here's the thing. There's freedom and there's, there's strength in numbers. And this is the reason why they're manipulating what you see on the Internet, manipulating the polls so you think the numbers are on the other side. So we, you're absolutely right. You absolutely nailed it. We have got to be very visible, very vocal, show our numbers, and show that we're not, you know, that there, there's doctors and lawyers and people with doctorates from Harvard who are saying these things so that there is strength in numbers. But when it comes to your personal information, we have to go to break. make it private. You hear a lot of network ads, which are great people in a lot of cases. But if you hear me endorsing something, it means I believe in it and think it's a high-quality product. And one of those sponsors is MyPatriotSupply.com forward slash Alex. I think everybody should be self-sufficient as much as they can. Water filtration, you name it, all of those type of things are essential. You can find it all at MyPatriotSupply.com forward slash Alex. MyPatriotSupply.com forward slash Alex or 866-229-0927. What are some of the things you want to point out when we do overdrive? Um, well, I definitely want to encourage all the listeners to be making smart changes. Uh, I was part of the initiative or, or supported the initiative at Reset the Net, which was about getting people to switch over to encryption on the Internet. So what we're really doing, we're, we're keeping the Internet, we're building an encrypted layer on top of it. And that's startpage.com, which people should be using instead of Google, Yahoo, and Bing. That's Startmail, which has a two-minute video. I encourage people to go to startmail.com, check out the video there, and sign up to uh, pre-register or pre-reserve an account when that comes out. That's it's coming out soon. We got 50,000 beta testers. We thought we'd get 1,000. I said, let's beta test it. Okay. We open it up. We have 50,000 people. We had to shut it down when we had so many people. Yeah, that's exciting. Well, tell me when you're ready to launch it. We'll certainly want to have you back for that. Uh, let's go to Greg in California. Greg, thanks for holding. You're on the air. Yes, Alex Jones. Uh, I'm, I'm glad to finally be able to get a hold of you. Uh, I was calling basically to say hi to uh, Catherine. I think you said her name's Catherine. Yep. Right here. Uh, yeah. Anyway, uh, I, I agree with some of the uh, things she said about the smart, uh, smart, not phones, but the homes. I don't agree with that stuff because I don't want the government tracking my every well, move. Well, sir, I mean, it's 100% on record to dominate, you control everything you do. That's the problem. I mean, they admit that. This is, I mean, yes, you're right. Right. So yeah, I got a degree. A couple of products you want to avoid. One of them is Google Nest. Don't put a Nest thermostat in your home because it's kind of the thin end. Anything smart. Smart, smart means smart slavery. Smart means slavery. Sir, you said yeah. you disagree with what? something. Go ahead. What, what? Go ahead. You disagree? 
You no, know, I, I agree with what you're saying that, uh, that, that we don't need this tracking in our in our systems. It's just too much espionage and spying on our own people, and I think it's unconstitutional. And I'm also a veteran of the military. I retired in 2008, um, and I was stationed at Dias Air Force Base in Abilene. And I wanted to mention that I remember when I worked there, I worked in the w, the WSA weapon storage area, and I remember seeing radioactive symbols. So to know that in our own heart, in our own country, that they stole nukes from there is a bad thing. Mm -hmm. So I, I agree with uh, you guys, and that's why I listen to you every day, and I spread the word to all my friends that I know and family. I tell them, start listening to your show. I tell them to get involved. Uh, I even called the city council and, and told them I found out they're putting fluoride in our water over here, and the guy didn't want to do anything about it. So I'm going to keep doing what i got to do. Uh, I'm even growing my own vegetables. I'm not buying a lot of them in the stores anymore. But my thing is, uh, uh, seeing what I've seen, I've been to Central America, I've been to Panama, I've been all around the world. I was in Germany in 89 before the Berlin Walls came down. And when I came home, I told everybody before it even hit the media that it was going to happen. We're in overdrive talking to Greg in California, veteran. You saw a lot. That's why vets are the easiest to wake up because they know we're not making stuff up. They've already been into one level of the secrecy or even deeper. But uh, finishing, he started with a key term. He goes, I don't think we need this type of espionage against our own people. See, we're so tribal. He's a smart guy. And I'm this way, too. I keep saying, we, 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 we shouldn't be doing this in Ukraine. Uh, or we shouldn't be spying on our own people with these government systems and the smart meters and the rest of it. The globalists have had a technotronic, technocratic coup in their own words over the infrastructure. That's why they want centralization that even bypasses government. And they use perception management where the Border Patrol told us four months ago, we've been ordered to stand down. No one would confirm it or make a big deal out of it. I finally said, let's go to the border and show this. Because a whistleblower calls and said, I'm with ICE. They bring them in on buses. We're forced to load them and take them and dump them off. It became national news all because we were here, which scares me because I'm ragtag, folks. I can't even respond to 10% of what's coming in. I mean, the stuff that's coming in is just crazy, but it shows what you could do out there. Mainline talk show host, get a camera, get a crew, uh, put videos on YouTube, part of your radio show. Uh, be the media. It's a vacuum. But but call her. This is a short segment, long segment coming up with Catherine here with us in the studio. But, but Greg, other points or uh, any comments you've got off what he said, Catherine? Uh, yes, there's, there's something else I wanted to say, too. My wife went to a clinic to get her checkup, and she's Russian. And she heard in Russian they were asking, these are doctors at the counter or the clerks, asking if they own weapons. And that, to me, shouldn't even be going on either. And I've, I've witnessed it, and my wife told me about this. So people going to clinics, being asked these questions about whether they own guns is unconstitutional, and I've witnessed it myself. Oh, it's this in Obamacare. It's ago. in Obamacare. It's, 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 this is it, folks. They are, look, this is it. They're dropping the hammer. Catherine, you agree with that statement? Yeah, and when you mention Obamacare, I just have to point out that I'm one of the people who completely lost my health coverage. I am no longer able to receive the treatment that I received for the breast cancer that I'm going to be in treatment for for the rest of my life. I literally had it taken away from me by Obamacare. Uh, in the state of New Hampshire, now I'm not allowed to leave the state. They turned our state into the reservation, basically. I, can receive, I can't even go over the border into Massachusetts where I was treated. So Obamacare, nightmare, top to bottom. And I think as our, they give us an extension, but as that runs out at the end of the year, I think you're going to see a huge amount of backlash as all of the people who had their care taken away from them are going to be um, starting to but by out. then the yeah. world war three would have started mm -hmm. i'm re in the collapsed border see that's why they keep pushing it off because they know everybody's going to get mad well it's it's you push off the resistance so that you can get it in place and then it becomes entrenched and then when the resistance comes up there's really nothing you can do about it so i think that's why on on obamacare they've just given us these extensions but the idea of asking people if they have firearms it it's not really unconstitutional it's unconstitutional for the government to tell doctors to do that and report back but here's the thing what what you choose to voluntarily it's your compliance a or a company or to the police else, right? or to the doctors yes. these authority figures yeah when a cop asked me at a checkpoint to search my car, I say, are you looking for somebody? Do I match the description? They go, hey, buddy. I go, hey, I care about you and your family. You know this is a bunch of bull. Now, you ought to be ashamed of yourself. You want to get a dog in here and make a big issue out of this? You know the government ships the narcotics in. 
And the cop always goes, just get out of here. Or they say, no, I know you're right. You can go. But they're just following orders. They're having their own future destroyed, Catherine. Yeah, no, I think it... Start saying no. Doctor asked me that. It's like, I'm just like, none of your business, bro. So we need to learn how to say no to data requests. Somebody asks for your age of birth, your data, oh, yeah. your phone oh, yeah. number, say no. I just say no, thank you. <laughs> oh, they do it everywhere. It, it, it's incredible. And they also like you to beep at the gate to act like you're bad. Like I was at this place the other day buying stuff, and I said, I want you to scan all this so it doesn't beep. And when it beeped, and they ran up to me, I said, this is it. Get your manager. I made a huge scene. I said, this is social engineering. You don't even know it. More calls coming up. They believe they're invincible, ladies and gentlemen, but they're not if we just admit that they have bad will towards us. And people within their own system, you don't have to do a bunch of heroic stuff. It's just decisions you make every day. Where you spend your money, where you go, what you do, what you leak will bring them down in the end. Because they're just people like us. Only our goodwill and our naivete has allowed it to go this far. Let's race through your calls now. Catherine Albright is our guest here. Catherine Albright. I'm always saying names wrong on air. Well, don't 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 com connect me with Madeline Albright. Oh, yeah, I know, I know, I know. <laughs> okay, I know. I can hard. I know, I know. Albright. I know. I can hardly say my own name right. Hey, when you've been on air already three plus hours, I just get punch drunk. I, I well, I love the overdrive because I think like the true Alex really comes out by now. The true Alex. Uh, next caller. Let's, <laughs> no, uh, Paul in New Jersey. You're on the air. Go ahead. Hey, good afternoon, folks. Uh, you're talking about something. Well, you can stop this stuff right now with the income tax. It's a fraud. It's under the UCC, and you could get two guys out of jail by using the UCC. It's uh, next uh, congressman George Hansen and Erwin Schiff. Is this Erwin Schiff? No, I, I'm not Erwin Schiff, but uh, Erwin Schiff's in jail. Yes, you are. You don't want to get in trouble calling out of jail. Erwin. No, I'm not Erwin Schiff. I'm Paul. Buddy, I, I know Erwin Schiff, Peter Schiff's father, who's in federal prison for writing a book about the IRS. And, well, and, and you sound just like him. Well, I, I, I want to I want to say something. Look, I, I fought these people, and I found out about the UCC how they entrap you. See, all financial taxing uh, transactions are done under the UCC, and that's how they entrap you. Once you accept that 1040 form, you're dead in the water. Erwin, how, how did you get to how did you get to a telephone? They're supposed to sign on a penalty perjury that you owe the money, and they don't do it. If you're not Erwin Schiff, I mean, I mean, you know your voice is almost identical to him, right? Well, I don't know. <laughs> you're the one telling me that. But uh, I called you before, Alex. Uh, but I need to talk about this. You could get these guys out of jail if you get enough people behind it. See, you're under the UCC, they entrap you. Now, listen, it's the Federal Reserve. It's private, the income tax, it's all a fraud. That's on record. And and it does show we're under financial bondage. That's how they're able to do all this. And, you know, Erwin Schiff literally wrote a book exposing it, and the judge said, don't publish it anymore. And the ju they put him in prison for a book. And they tried to put a uh, former Treasury agent who quit over all this, uh, Joe Bannister, in jail, but the jury found him not guilty. That's how scary this country is. They wanted to arrest him for giving speeches. They claimed that he was aiding and abetting people in fraud to tell them that it was all actually private. But but it is on record. Do you believe that, Catherine? Well, anytime your own government is telling you you can't speak, I mean, the, the whole thing about free speech, if, if they had a problem with it, then they should say why it's wrong, but not arrest people. Yeah, I mean, Erwin Schiff's been in jail. It's got to be like 15 years. And I interviewed him many times. He used to be on this radio network. And, of course, his brother, I mean, his son, uh, Peter Schiff, is very successful, manages, I think, like $5 million. Uh, but uh, it just shows how crazy this government is. Thank you, Paul. Good point. Mike in California, you're on the air. Hello, Alex, Dr. Albert. You're both truly great Americans, and thanks for keeping up the good work. I know you feel like you're banging your head against the wall sometimes, but let me tell you, we're waking up out here. Hey, uh, Alex, uh, former Marine, former Deputy Sheriff, I'd love to be one of your correspondents out here if you ever need it. On another note, it's, uh, I have a theory about what's going on at the border, and uh, I haven't heard anybody talking about it. Uh, thousands of these people coming across the border are age 15 to 17 years old. What's to say so one of these terrorist organizations 
down south, South America, Honduras, are training these people to come up here, and they're waiting until they have just enough, enough uh, of a group up here to do one great. Well, sure, attack. sure, sure. Of course, no, no, no. We've been saying that. You must have missed it. It's not your theory is correct. It's not a theory. They're bringing radical uh, Islamists across the border. They found the literature of the prayer cloths. They've apprehended them. And then they're, uh, you know, quietly shipping them out when they do, local police and others, and when the Border Patrol can. Uh, and they're using these kids by the hundreds of thousands as mules with fake IDs and fake names to launder money, which we know the Democrats and others are heavily involved in money laundering. So, so absolutely. I mean, look, it just shows how out of control the system is. They are absolutely correct, and we're in dangerous times now. And people need to wake up, and people need to start paying attention, and keep their head on a 360, and, and make sure that they they're covering themselves. Exactly. Just because the border patrol has been ordered to stand down on now publicly doesn't mean that sheriffs' deputies can't stop criminals, or police can't, or citizens. And I got to say, I've been critical of Rick Perry, but I learned that he very quietly and secretly uh, through the state police sent thousands of state police down there in the last few months, and they've been apprehending and running the records of these people that are felons, that are at least in the system, and are taking them to Mexico basically themselves, and Mexico's refusing them. So the next big crisis is all these illegal felons building up that Obama's about to release again. But I'm surprised Rick Perry and the state police even did something good. That's good. I mean, uh, Catherine? Boy, that's that's probably not a topic I can say much about. I live up in New Hampshire, where we don't have the border problems of people coming down from Canada. But I know certainly it's a big it's a big deal down here, and it's a big deal for the whole country. Well, yeah, I mean Latin America is collapsing. I mean Mexico is a failed state, and it's now failing into us. And uh, you know, I actually lived in Mexico for a year when I was fifteen. I was a co-host on a Mexican television show, and I'm fluent in Spanish. So back in 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 that era, nice. Mexico was a very different place. Very nice very different place. And now I I wouldn't go back even on vacation because it's been totally overrun by by the drug lords. And yeah, you know, it's the corruption with the police who are part of that. And it, the drug war did it. Safe. It yep. is. Yeah. I mean, we know the drug culture is bad. I'm not endorsing it, but at the top they run the drug war so they can launder the money. And then it creates a criminal culture. It's just, and I'm not saying legalization of hard drugs is good either, but it's better than prohibition. Well, it's where the money is. And so the, the, the power will always go where the money is. And if they can make it illegal so that they can make more money off of it, then, you know, that's... Oh, yeah, no, no. I, I've been involved in documentaries where the drug lords admit... Yeah, you follow the money. ...that, that they want it illegal. I mean, the prison companies lobby to keep it illegal. So what do you think, what do you make of George Soros spending $80 million to legalize marijuana now? In that's one of the only good things he's ever done. And that's a, that's a, well, let me just finish. Th that's a, on the surface, I was going to, that's a PR stunt, total PR stunt to look like he, but, but the real reason is they're not really decriminalizing it. You waive your rights in these states like Michigan and Colorado and California and get put on a list and now they come to your house whenever they want. Now they take your kids. Uh, it's a trap to institutionalize medical marijuana users uh, and is a way with this new super weed to basically turn people into zombies. That's that's the thing. That's what's got. That's what I think is going on because George Soros himself has said that he doesn't approve of pot smoking. He doesn't want his family smoking pot. He himself doesn't smoke pot, but he wants you and your family smoking pot because the eight hours a day they want you cleaning up the roads and 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 driving the buses and keeping the system going. But in your off time, they want you either playing World of Warcraft like a zombie. Or no, I agree, but you don't phone. throw. Uh, somebody in you don't throw somebody in prison for it though yeah well it's it's been um obviously that that's been a very powerful way to do asset forfeiture and all sorts Look, of here's things. the deal here's the deal yeah. people want to drink drano and kill themselves I, I, i'm with you i'm uh, a so, and i totally believe that you should have the let me tell you i've seen the new medical marijuana wreck people i mean i've known beautiful smart women who are like wreck zombies now i've known really smart businessmen who are zombies now well, here's the thing. What what does marijuana do? It it mellows you out. It makes you mellow. There's it, there's a reason why we have this sort of stereotype of the laid back pothead because they're not the kind of people who are going to take a picket sign and go and actually make some change. They're not the kind of people who are going to. I mean, some of them some of them do. Don't get me wrong, but. 
as a whole, if you took the entire American population and had them all smoking pot every night, it would be like Soma from Brave New World. It just mellows people. Well, here's out. the deal. They're coming they're out. Right back. I've confirmed. This is a big story we're working on. They've already got the GMO strains that are being privately done in labs. Yeah, that's going to be scary. This is that not is marijuana. Scary. This they're is not marijuana. The genome of it, absolutely. And and the second piece of that is all the video games that are so incredibly addictive. Those they they've actually taken psychological insights that have been developed over decades and incorporated them of addiction. Oh yeah, who's that? Who's addiction. that expert lady on you have? I want to tell the guys her name. I want to get her on the one about had, the addiction. I've had a couple on talking about addiction. I know so many women who are leaving their husbands because because they just want to play video games all yeah, day. Yeah, yeah, and and I, and, and they'll always say you know like somebody you know that's a video game head they'll go hey it's my life. Not a problem with it. And, and I'm like, hey, I'm just telling you it was developed by DARPA to literally turn you into a zombie. You know, so, okay. Well, and, and what happens is that, you know, you look at all the mass shooters, and they were all heavy video game players because you're developing a skill. And when you develop a skill, I mean, if I were taking guitar lessons, I'd want to get up on a stage and play guitar. So if I'm playing these games all day long and learning how to kill, at some point, y y that's a skill you've developed. And there's a certain percentage of people that go, why am I just wasting my time practicing this skill here when I can go out and actually do it? They're basically, well, they had studies that prove that the D.A.R.E. program, we're going to skip this network break into one more segment. They had... Uh, you know, studies out there that death education in schools cause more suicide. Uh, like, don't commit suicide, here's how to do it. 2020 even admitted a doubling and tripling of suicide. The D.A.R.E. program taught kids how to use drugs. Yeah, no, it's it's the focus on this stuff. And I, I how many ways can they get us to zone out? It, 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 they don't care if you're angry. They don't care if you know. They care if you do something about it. That's really the key. And so people need to understand you can be as informed as you want, but if you're sitting around, you know, like a stoner talking to your buddies over, you know, over a beer instead of actually signing petitions and making changes and going out there. Well, that's what I tell my people. crew. They're incredibly active. They do a great job. But we can all do better, myself included. I'll hear these great discussions of story ideas and things that are going on in the coffee room or in, the, but it 90% it, of the time it's between them and never goes anywhere. Yeah. And I'm like, hey, the universe is out there. We got to get this going outside of here. We got to have a public discussion about this and then put it into action. Yeah, that's why I'm not a big fan of pot smoking. I think it should be legal because I'm a libertarian and I don't think the government should use guns and tanks to tell you what to I do. Agree. But as a personal choice, it's probably not the best one if you want to actually have an impact on the world. But see, it's a, it's a cult too. Because then I've been in all these films about decriminalization and stuff, but then people go, man, why don't you think it's a good culture then? $80 million that George Soros spent to fund the grassroots organizations to build up this kind of motion around it, this kind of... And by the way, let's talk about who he is. He's really a Rothschild front on record. That's even come out in the British news. The Rothschild sued over it, lost the lawsuit. And the judge said, wow, this, this lawsuit basically proves you're like evil masterminds. And Soros is their front man. A Nazi collaborator they hired for bizarre reasons to run things. He's given DARPA intel. Everything he does is key. Arab Spring, he's behind the open borders right now to collapse things. He's, he brags he's behind the Ukraine takeover. I mean, this guy is literally like a James Bond supervillain. So you're right. Why is he behind legalizing 80, the weed? $80 million. Think about how much money that is. What, you, what could you do with $80 well, million I'll tell you, to make the country they, a better place? No, no, no. They promote it, make it acceptable to get more people on it, make it more available... So I was for decriminalization. Now I realize with their Humet super science systems, they went above that and are making an institutional with weapons grade pot to then make it acceptable, put it in stores everywhere and literally zombo everybody. Zombify the whole country and have us once again, it's back to what I was saying earlier. It's the get you to embrace your chains. If they said, hey, everybody, you're going to have to take a Soma pill after you get off work that's going to zone you out for six, seven hours a night so you don't mess with us, we'd be up in arms. But if they say, hey, we're, we're going to do what you want. We're going to, you know, don't throw me in the briar patch. We're, we're going we're gonna to give you what you want reluctantly, but we'll give it to you and we'll let you smoke pot all night long. How do we win with that? How, how do we And again, that doesn't mean there aren't people like George Washington. They called it toothache weed or stomach ache weed because most of it was hemp. You know, they called that like shale or rope hemp, but they had the toothache hemp and call it weed. And, and, and the apothecaries would say for your stomach, take this, you know, for your uh, tooth hurting, smoke this. So, but that was probably 50 times not as strong. Exactly. And when you GMO modify this stuff, I, it, 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 there's no telling what they could do to it. I mean, you could smoke this stuff and never come back. I, I don't know. I don't know what's coming. Well, see, that's, the, that, that's why they're promoting it now. And so we have to understand the old police state model's bad. 
but the new model's bad too. And see, people think, no, it's one or the other. Alex, why are you against marijuana? You police state thug. What is your problem? I'm like, I'm not for Putin and I'm not for Obama. <laughs> no, you're for Putin or you're, you're for Obama. You, you've got to choose a side. No. It, this, you got to see all of it. Dichotomy. It's artificial. It's like the Republican or Democrat. And the reality is, is neither side is your friend. They're both going to take away your freedoms. Exactly. There is no left and right. There's just freedom and control. And those guys are on the control side. So it, the, these artificial, I mean, think think about Republican, Democrat. Who, who came up with the idea that it is okay to kill a baby, but not okay to go to war? Well, listen, here's an example. That it's okay to go to war, but you can't kill a baby. I mean, it's not okay to kill, period. Exactly. I'm, I'm not up for that. Well, it's not good to murder in cold blood. It's good murder? to defend yourself. Yeah. Expanding on that, and then we'll take a few final calls. I'm sorry, folks. It's just, this is an interesting conversation. <clears throat> I'm literally like police that they have go smoke marijuana to see what it's really like so they can recognize it. I will smoke it maybe once a year. And it's also varied. Sometimes I've smoked medical-grade marijuana that actually hypes you up and you can really think well, but only a few times. Almost all of what's out there, because I'll be at a park and people, and, and, you know, 20-year-olds are smoking pot, and I'll say, let me have a hit off that just randomly once a year. I've smoked pot that, that teenagers are smoking on the street and literally can't think a day later off one hit. That's how strong this stuff is. And I mean hating it, hating it the next day that I can't think. So, I mean, that, it's it's powerful. So you take your population and you make sure that nine to five, they sweep the roads, make sure that nine to five, they do the, the basic things to keep a nice world for the, the pond scum to live in. But then you want them knocked out. You, you want them out of the game for the rest of the time. So I, I don't know, you do you, your mileage may vary. I say everybody do your own thing. Not not really my business, but take a look at the people you know who are heavy pot smokers, and chances are pretty good that they're not out there making social change in the world. Well, some people can smoke a little bit of it who are high strung, from what I've read and talked to folks, and 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 they're moderate about it. It's not that bad, you know. Oh, it's some like people like have a few game. glasses of wine. It's like a video game. If you're playing World of Warcraft uh, 16 hours a day for seven days a week, then you're going to lose your marriage, you're going to lose your job, you're going to lose everything, and you're going to be living in your mother's basement, you know, weighing 300 pounds. But if you play, if you can play a video game a couple hours a week, it's not a big deal. Hey, listen, in my house, I have one of those master consoles that costs a couple thousand bucks. There's like 30 old-fashioned video games on it. And maybe when friends come over once a month, we'll go up for 30 minutes and just as a nostalgia, you know, it's more of a novelty. Like you well, have time to play video games, Alex. Seriously. Well, it's you good know, to have a distraction what, sometimes. Yeah. Absolutely. And and, and we all need play to Missile Command, play Pac-Man. But don't take a break by shooting heroin. Don't take a break with things that we know are addictive that are bit that are specifically developed to be maximally addictive. They took research from looking at gamblers in Vegas, which they used to make things more addictive to you, and they incorporated all of those things into these video games. And into fast food? And, and, and people that are the chemicals, people that are enslaved to this, yeah. literally will think we're telling them what to yeah. do. Yeah. But hey, I eat too much. You know, there's been times when I've drank too much, whatever. I mean, we all need to help each other. But know when you're being manipulated into thinking that you're getting something wonderful, to thinking that you're getting more freedom, like the cell phone, and, and instead be getting less freedom. Because it's no longer the guns and tanks pointed at you, forcing you to do these things. Now they get you to think that it was hey, your idea in the first place. I lost my cell phone three days ago. And I got to tell you, I'm not missing it. I got to go get it turned off or something, but I got a backup over there. But I, I mean, I know it's an enemy weapon, a Trojan horse given to me. I use it for YouTube videos and things. But it's, I just know. Like, it's just like the video games. Use it in moderation. Use it. Well, I only use it because it's a powerful weapon. And I, and I literally, when I want to have a private conversation, it goes out of the room. Uh, let's go to Chris. Chris in Nevada, I apologize. You're on the air. Go ahead. Oh, not a problem, Alex. What a fantastic pleasure to be on with two of the top truth advocates on GCN Live, broadcasting truth in the empire of lies. Well, that guy's do a liner for us. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, well, it is a distinct pleasure. You know, Catherine, you being from Harvard, you probably are familiar with the Joseph Goebbels and Edwin Bernays tell a lie often enough, and they'll begin to believe it's the truth. Yes, it works. And and even if you don't believe it, tell people that everybody else believes it. And then you'll think that resistance is futile and there's no point fighting back, which is why the Defense Department is involved in that kind of research to make sure that they can manipulate the Internet. So you believe you're alone. It's it's all part of the But I'll tell you, I've seen PSYOP meetings on C-SPAN where they have the PSYOPs division and they're on television saying they're going to stop lying to us. And everybody looked completely depressed and freaked out <laughs> because that was the public depressed rollout. Lying to us. It, it was the yeah. well, well, no, it was the public rollout of total lying. 
them saying we're going to be in your neighborhood now we promise to stop lying it was we admit that you don't trust us now you can trust us just so you lower your shield and they can stab you yeah yeah no i i anytime their lips are moving i'm i'm suspicious well god bless you sir i'm gonna try to jam in one more do you have anything else chris well i did want to say that stalin always says that the best way to control the opposition is to be the opposition and i think that's what precisely we're seeing with this ukraine thing and also with the over the border thing with the organizer in chief absolutely they create the crisis offer the solution great points uh let's go ahead and talk to clinton michigan uh, go ahead thanks for calling hey thanks alex for having me you bet brother um, i just i just wanted to say you know i uh i have a smartphone i have a, t a computer and stuff but I look at all this stuff out there, and it scares me, the new technology, all the stuff they can do. And I got, I'm got, i a store manager for a uh, convenience store, and I got all these people coming in, and you wouldn't believe how many people on a daily basis as they're stumbling around for their credit cards or their keys. They're like, man, I wish I just had a barcode on my arm that I could just scan. And I know. That's something I, I hear it in line all the time now, and, and, and I meant to do a video about it. I always want to catch it. On, on video, you know, with my little smart devil that I'm carrying, but never can, where it's like, I just wish I had a chip. I just wish I had something in me. I just don't want to do anything. And, you know, don't worry, the big Omni computer will run your whole life. Well, so you can just wander around to the store. Even the Bible says that, that people are going to, when, when the beast comes, they're going to say, oh, how fabulous. This, this is amazing. Who they'll be putting brain about? chips in people at the church. They'll be going for this. They'll be, they'll be seeking it out. It's not, it's not going to come in with guns and tanks. They, they will, believe me, they will come in with guns and tanks for those of us who resist it. But that's going to be a very, very small margin. We're in the final phase. They well, no, I mean, Kurzweil and all of them have said, you're like a bug. We'll just sit on you. Yeah. Like, like, you know, at first you'll be in reservations for not taking the chips, and then we're going to come into those reservations, those ghettos. Alex Jones here for Infowars.com. We're going to be intensifying our efforts to awaken free humanity to the scourge of the globalist in the month of July. And starting this July 4th, we are going to slash prices in a celebration of true Americana, the Bill of Rights, the Constitution, and the Declaration of Independence on all of the Made in America products that you will find at madein1776.com or infowarsstore.com. We're talking about Made in America, belt buckles in brass and nickeled brass that stated loud and proud. Molon Labe, that's why we have the best-selling Made in America men's and women's Molon Labe Infowars.com shirts. Ladies and gentlemen, this is a win-win. You vote with your dollars, you support the most hardcore organization out there for promoting true ideas of libertarianism, constitutionalism, basic human empowerment. But more importantly, you get T-shirts and belt buckles so you can meet like-minded people. So you have a conversation starter with friends and family and coworkers. We are reaching out to each other. And you also throw it in the face of the anti-gunners and the rest of the parasites out there that you're a free man and woman and that you're not going to be a slave, that, that, that you're not going to be intimidated to shut up by their tyranny that they call political correctness. That's why in the month of July, we have got giant specials on everything at MadeIn1776.com. But to expand the info war, we're offering the biggest special in the history. What is it? 13 years of PrisonPlanet.tv, our multimedia platform. We're offering the equivalent of more than five months free right now when you get a membership at PrisonPlanet.tv and you get 11 memberships that can be used with the same username and passcode so you can share it with friends and family. Now is the time to fund the war bonds. Now is the time to fund the info war. Now is the time to get aggressive. Now is the time to double down. Now is the time to realize you are the people that made the info war so successful and one of the leading lights worldwide against tyranny. 
You don't stand behind us. You stand right beside us. And I salute all of you on this July 4th, 2014 and going forward in the month of July and onward. This is about freedom worldwide and that desire for human dignity and self-determination that beats in the human breast. We are brothers and sisters together in the true spirit of liberty and the animating contest of liberty. And so I quote in closing the great Thomas Jefferson that I have sworn on the altar of God resistance against every form of tyranny. And never forget, if you are watching or listening to this transmission, you are the resistance.